The 2022 Formula One season is finally over, and the dust also seems to have settled in the wake of the tempestuous storm over 2021's cost cap accounting. Red Bull has been forced to swallow the pill of a $7 million fine and a 10% reduction in aerodynamic testing time, and the other teams have had to accept that the punishment ends there. It's not a surprise that Red Bull wanted a lighter sentence and that the other teams wanted more, that's only natural in Formula One's Piranha Club. And let's be honest, the endless grandstanding and melodrama from all sides has been tiresome, but if Red Bull was to roll over and accept the penalty in good grace, it would belie its initial stance that it felt that its accounting had been in order. Part of the eventual £1.8 million overspend apparently related to Red Bull's catering budget, so there's at least a chance that the team will have something to take the bitter taste away from the whole Farrago. Red Bull principal Christian Horner labelled the punishment as draconian, others reckoned it was too lenient, Mercedes Toto Wolff resisted the urge to trade jabs with a frequent sparring partner and reckons it was too much for Red Bull, not enough for others. Of course, they'd all have different opinions if the shoe was on the other foot. The true picture then of the draconian nurse of Red Bull's penance won't become apparent yet, as the punishment affects the team's wind tunnel and simulation time over the next 12 months. The $7 million fine ironically levied for surpassing the cost cap will have little to no effect on the team, as it doesn't actually affect its cap-affected budget for next season. It comes outside of that allowance and will not have to be accounted for, and so by rights it should be that the FIA uses it for good. Either way, it's an irrelevance. But will the 10% reduction in aerodynamic testing meet out any kind of punishment? Already that reduction in aero testing time has split opinion. Horner said, I can tell you now that is an enormous amount. That represents anywhere between a quarter and half a second's worth of lap time. That comes in from now, that has a direct effect on next year's car and will be in place for a 12 month period. And it's true that Red Bull will take a hit on an already depleted allowance of wind tunnel and simulation time, as it already operates on the lowest allotted time on the FIA's sliding scale. So let's break that down first just so everyone's on the same page with what the aerodynamic testing regulations actually affect, before delving into the veracity of Horner's comments and if he doth protest too much. In that aero testing sliding scale, new for 2022, the FIA has determined a base level of testing to work from. This is assigned to the team that finishes 7th in the championship, teams below that get more testing time and resources, and the teams above that get less, in 5% increments. For example, Williams finished 10th in the Constructors' Championship and thus will get 115% of the base level allocation. Red Bull prior to its punishment would have received 70% of that time. 10% reduction is then applied as a compound reduction to the new total and so Red Bull now gets 63% of the base total. There are 6 aerodynamic testing periods in a year, spanning 2 months each. For each testing period, there are allocations of wind tunnel time and runs that a team can use, and in CFD, a number of discrete items that can be tested. Coming up on screen now is Red Bull's allotted value per aerodynamic testing period against the base value, the values it would have received pre-penalty, and what Ferrari will receive for finishing second. Wind tunnel runs are self-explanatory, and wind on time refers to the amount of time that a team can run with a wind speed higher than 15 meters per second. The FIA defines wind tunnel occupancy as the first shift of occupancy will be deemed to commence the first time the wind tunnel airspeed is above 5 meters per second on any given calendar day and will end at a time declared by the competitor when the wind tunnel airspeed falls below 5 meters per second. The geometries refer to those used in CFD. Any new or altered geometries tested consumes that relative allowance. As for the CFD solving measured in mega allocation unit hours, whatever that means, this refers to a formula relating time spent on simulations multiplied by processing power and cores used. So a less powerful system will take more time to solve a simulation, and thus it balances out to ensure that teams with a more powerful hardware don't have a baked-in advantage. Over a two-month period, Red Bull loses about 22 runs in the wind tunnel owing to its penalty, around 5.5 hours of wind on time and about 28 hours of occupancy time. Relative to Ferrari in that same period, this corresponds to about 9.5 hours of testing at higher wind speeds, 48 hours less time overall in the wind tunnel, and about 38 runs. But does that correspond to Horner's claims that Red Bull will lose around quarter to half a second's lap time? Mercedes' Andrew Shovlin doesn't quite agree, and suggested that Horner's metric would suggest a team at the back of the grid would have a three second advantage to the one at the front, and that isn't the case. One current F1 aerodynamicist's view of the situation was that it was a slap on the wrist for Red Bull, even when taking the air testing penalty into account. But at this point, it's probably worth asking an independent adjudicator for their view, so we've asked friend of the channel and ex-F1 aerodynamicist Jean-Claude Mijot. As someone who's spent most of his adult life in a wind tunnel, he's well aware of the challenges of finding performance within them, and so the situation was put to him. 
If Red Bull is already operating at the lowest end of the aero testing scale and then gets a further reduction, will that cost the team as much as Horner suggests? Mijo explained that F1 teams invest in trying to get more data with less time in the wind tunnel, and it's been an ongoing process over the last 10 years. With Red Bull's expertise, it hurts the team less than it might with another. But as Mijo says, I think for next year the developments are quite clear for most of them, but for Red Bull it's even more clear. So I don't think it's a real penalty, honestly. They're the best team to cope with it, if I can say it this way. So what's the penalty really worth, then, if the overspend is by just £1.8 million? If one takes Red Bull at its word, and the bulk of it was purely down to overdoing the catering, then the team simply has to shell out on 520,000 fewer Tesco meal deals, and the slight time loss predicted draws a line in the sand in case other teams fancy risking the upper limit. But if that limit was helped by initially going over on development, then how much does the time loss cost via a knock-on effect? Ultimately, the rules transgression cannot go unpunished, and even the most fervent of Red Bull fans cannot argue that, particularly if their reaction to another team doing the same would not elicit the same response. As much as many would like the FIA to make an example of Red Bull, it's hard to sanction such an overwhelming penalty given Red Bull complied fully with the FIA's investigation. The effect on the 2023 Red Bull, assuming the majority of development work is already done, won't be anything like it would be on the 2024 car, although the wind tunnel and CFD restrictions might hurt in-season development slightly simply due to the timing of the 12-month penalty span. Perhaps the circa £8 million ultimate spend, including overspend and penalty, along with the reduced testing time, was worth it for the short term. This is equally something that the FIA must monitor to determine whether the punishment did indeed fit the crime. If Red Bull spends the next few years hobbling around in the lower midfield, then the penalty is too heavy-handed, but one suspects that it will be a minor inconvenience at best. The aero team will simply have to cut its cloth accordingly, and no doubt it will. A 0.25 second to 0.5 second loss of time for the sake of a couple of wind tunnel runs a week seems unlikely. Ultimately, Red Bull will probably be fine.